I don't know how it happened, Chris. James Gunn is a madman and a genius. He made me like John Cena. Oh my God. I don't know what to think how, anymore. How does she not like John Cena? He's a natural treasure. Not when you watched wrestling. Well, I mean, just because you won all the time and buried a lot of talent doesn't mean you should dislike him. He was just the best. Look, I don't hate John Cena, but I hated John Cena. I know what you're talking about. Yep. John Cena. But not John Cena. Do you remember when John Cena's finisher was the FU? Yep. Good days. Yeah. Also, he was the professor of thugonomics. Is that was, offensive now? I think it was a doctor. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yes, he had a doctorate. Now, uh, he hadn't. Uh, he didn't cheated. have a professorate. Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah, it's a, little, it's a different thing. It's a different thing. Yeah. Oh shit, that's on. No. Oh. Welcome back to the Out of Touch podcast. I'm Chris. That's Bill, and we are talking about DC's newest and possibly greatest. R-rated show. I mean, they've got another one too that's also really good. Why is DC working so well in TVMA stuff? Because why the fuck not? Yeah. Well, also Marvel's too afraid to do it now. That's true. But we're talking about Peacemaker, the show starring John Cena as a sequel to the Suicide Squad movie and Directed and written by James Gunn, who literally... Mostly directed. He did, he did five of the eight episodes. Okay, mostly directed. He literally got a blank check from Warner Brothers to do whatever the hell he wanted in Pretty, many ways. Yeah, <laughs> I'd say so. So, Bill, what do you think of Peacemaker? I think it's crazy that a Z-list character is headlining a show on HBO Max while Superman's relegated to the CW. Yeah. It's such a weird thing to me. It's... Granted, I love both that show and this show. It's so weird that James Gunn took this nothing character and made something out of him. Yeah, it's so crazy. It's, in many ways, this is a show that is unbelievable that it exists. It really shouldn't, because... Even the most obscure DC characters that get shows before this, you had some era of familiarity. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, Green Arrow, it's all right. It's like a Robin Hood kind of thing. I get that. Constantine, there was that Keanu Reeves movie. But then it's just like Peacemaker. Who's that? I don't know. Do you know what Peacemaker appeared in before the Suicide Squad? I have uh, no idea. His first appearance anywhere outside of the comics was some kind of DC Scribble Knots game. Wow. That was it. Man, I totally forgot about Scribble Knots being a thing. Yeah, and there was a Peacemaker character that you could play as in that, and that was it. It's his only appearance outside of the comics before John Cena started playing him. So weird, not even a Lego game or anything. No, not even a background player in Justice League Unlimited. And there was a lot of freaking characters in Justice League Unlimited. Yeah. Unlimited was in the title. <laughs> they had everybody. Except Peacemaker. Except Peacemaker. I mean, Peacemaker was a Charleston Comics character acquired by DC, right? Charlton Comics, yes. Char Charlton. Him along with The Question and Blue Beetle and a bunch of others, Captain Adam. They were the basis for what became The Watchmen. And he was the guy that was what the basis was for Comedian, right? Yes. And now... Since he is such a zealous character, they literally can just do whatever the hell they wanted. And Pretty much. Even though they did apparently take stuff from the com what little comics he has. I mean, his appearance more or less is how he looks in the comics, right? Pretty much. So that's one thing. But his backstory is kind of different, I would assume. It's a bit different. Like, his father isn't the white dragon, but his father is like a bastard. Okay. I don't know if he has a thing with his brother. I don't know enough. He, he does have some connection to Vigilante. Okay. He killed one incarnation of Vigilante and then outed the identity of the Adrian Chase one, apparently. Hmm. So, you know, they weren't friends hanging out in the woods blowing up cars. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but they had a connection. That's something. Yeah, and it's weird. Vigilante is a character that showed up in Arrow. Yeah. And it was the Adrian Chase 
Sort of. Sort of. There's a bit of a roundabout messing around with the identities in that one. It was kind of a fake out there. Yeah. Um, so where do you want to start with this show? Like, sure, a lot of people have watched it. It's a great show. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's crazy. You might want to watch The Suicide Squad first. Yeah, that too. Because it, it, it will just tell you what happened at the start anyway. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of cool. Just a little quick recap. Plus, they gave us the, the shot of uh, the lady that clubbed the man the wall upside the skull getting arrested. Yeah. Which I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that lady's going to probably be executed. No, man the but... Wallers. Well, go. you know what? She's going to Bell Reeve, and she's going to get thrown into the Suicide Squad. Man. <laughs> she's going to die five minutes into the mission. <laughs> <laughs> what was my job again? Beep. <laughs> Head explodes. It's oh. like you. Oh, two, st- two steps to the right. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. James Gunn really likes to uh, take bastards and make you feel sorry for them, huh? Yeah, he does, huh? It's, uh, it's kind of amazing because, in many ways, Peacemaker is kind of like that. Uh, I don't know. He's. How do I explain this? He's a very comic booky character and the way he behaves in this show, he kind of reminds me of like in James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy movies, there's Drax and Drax is very much like a literal type of character. Peacemaker is kind of like Drax in a way where he has like a shtick of like, he's just so over the top and like intense about his like mission to like a fault. <laughs> It's kind of, it's like hilarious, but this definitely amplifies a lot more things about him. Uh, he says so many outlandish things about the other DC heroes. Because he's just great. He just believes everything he reads on the internet. Yeah. He's kind of like naive in a weird way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, as we see, I mean, look the upbringing he had. Yeah. He was... Raised in, like, a trailer park by a freaking monster. Yeah. Like, real monster in, like, every way. It's like, why was he having his sons fight each other? Him and his friends were betting on it, it seemed. Yeah. Made no sense. Didn't have to make sense because they were fucking psychos. Yeah. Also, his dad, you know, his dad is a villain called White Dragon who is pretty much like a neo-Nazi. And he also, I guess, is really smart because he invented all of Peacemaker's gadgets as well as his white dragon suit that can like fly around and stuff and bulletproof. And there's also like a weird thing where he has like a room in his house that is in like an alternate dimension. Yeah, some kind of pocket (laughs) dimension closet. Yeah, it's like a very grounded yet Totally comic booky show at the same time. Because it firmly exists in the DC universe. And you know what? You could just do that. Yeah. This is a universe where there's other superheroes. They're flying about. You're not going to see them. <laughs> it, it's very interesting that um, in the show, too, more or less, they have free reign to reference like everything DC related, including Batmite. That might exist now, they've said it. Yeah. That was a great exchange. It's like, that's a real guy? Also, it's like, DC just, like, doesn't care about, like, any of, I, I like, everything Peacemaker says about, like, Justice League members is on the table. It's, like, really weird. It's, like, he says, like, Superman's into, like, that German... Scheiser porn. Yeah, Scheiser porn. <laughs> this is like a weird thing about Al- Green Arrow. and that Green Arrow is like a weird fetish brony. Yeah. That Aquaman fucks fish. That Wonder Woman was giving him the fuck, fuck me eyes. I just like that he just said Flash is just an annoying douche. Yeah. <laughs> he talks about how much Batman sucks because he doesn't kill people. <laughs> Gets into an argument with an old man at the beginning of the series about why Batman sucks because he keep, lets the Joker stay alive. The funny thing is James Gunn, I think, said he did get some pushback with like the Batman stuff, but he but it all ended up in the show. Yeah. So he eventually just said, "Let all right, fine, you just do whatever. Just whatever. Just do it. Just, just what? Fine. But um, I guess quick plot synopsis before we just like dive into all the kooky characters. So after the events of the Suicide Squad, Peacemaker 
fully recovered. And a couple of the people that aided the Suicide Squad against Starro, against the man of Waller's wishes, and a few other Black Ops people have to recruit him for Project Butterfly. Yeah. Which he immediately suspects involves a giant butterfly because of the giant starfish from previously. Which I guess kind of does. Almost. Yeah. I was really hoping for that it actually would just sprout wings and start flying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to be like, shit, he's got to fight a mother. I love that. <laughs> he's like, my, like, what am I going to do? Fight a mother? Shit, am I going to fight a mother? <laughs> like he gets excited about the prospect of fighting a mother. It is pretty funny. And I just love that he calls it a mother because yeah. I'm a Godzilla fan. <laughs> it's, uh, it's insane. Yeah, so the show is Project Butterfly. You find out later on that there are these little insect things that look like butterfly spurring into people's skulls and kind of puppeteering their dead bodies. Yep, it's uh, invasion of the body snatchers. They're infiltrating high levels of the government and world leaders and whatnot. Yeah. They're up to shady stuff, I guess. Or maybe not so shady, but still shady because they kill children. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I, yeah, you're right. That's crazy. Um, so, of course, Amanda Waller has assembled a team to take on this dangerous mission. And uh, yeah. the team has some people we've seen from the Suicide Squad movie. Economos and Harcourt. Yeah. And then they're led by... This weird guy Mern who acts very strangely and I immediately twigged that is this guy an alien? Yeah. Something's, something's weird about this guy. And then of course Amanda Waller's mole in the group her daughter. Yes. Which immediately made that character a thousand times more interesting. Yeah because at first you're like if they didn't tell you that right at the beginning the way she acts you're like why is this lady here but then it's just like oh she's Amanda Waller's daughter and the, as the show goes on it's like oh she is actually really good at this type of work. Even She's, though she definitely doesn't want to do it. Yeah, her heart's not in it. Yeah. And just the fact that her mother is a monster like Amanda Waller gives her this sort of kindred spirit thing with Peacemaker and his monster of a father. Yeah. Which I think is why she's the first of the team to actually feel sorry for him. Yeah, because uh, Peacemaker is... He's a real asshole most of the time, but he kind of... He's a, he, up throughout the show. He's also aware of it, and he's like, why am I doing this? Damn it. Like, there's that one scene where he just starts, like, hitting himself and crying. That shit was fucked up. Yeah, it, it really goes places that you wouldn't expect from, like, a DC show. It's, it's like, kind of, like, deeper than just what, like, the surface level could be, where it's just, like, Peacemaker It's like, a douchebag-like murderer. But it's like, whoa... He is a douchebag murderer, but he also kind of feels bad about being a douchebag murderer. He he was set on this path by a sociopath that he calls his dad. Yeah. Who blatantly says to his face, I never liked you. I don't love you. Fuck you. I yeah. hate you. He's like, I like your brother better and stuff like that. Or it's like, no, he literally says, I never loved you. You were nothing to me. I loved your brother, but not you. Yeah, so messed up. <laughs> yeah crazy but i at the beginning of the show too it's like peacemaker like has like a weird relationship with his dad because he like kind of is just like doing anything to like get his dad to kind of like love him in a weird way where he's just like very devoted to like his like father even though his father's like a horrible person and treats him like garbage and everything I mean, it's it's got to be tough when you're in a situation like that because like that's his dad, it's his yeah. only family. It's not a hard thing to reconcile with, I imagine. Yeah, it is. Uh, and he doesn't quite reconcile with it at the end, no, in the long run. Not really. <laughs> he does, but then there's just long-lasting ramifications to it. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, interesting how it plays out. Um, I guess, like, some of the other characters, like, we got Economos, who is, like... Called Dye Beard for, like, half the show. Yeah. Who's, like, a stereotypical, like, hacker guy, I guess. Yeah, he's firmly on the, the tech side of things. Yeah, guy in the chair. Yeah. And then he gets out of the chair and runs a chainsaw through a gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got, uh, Hardcore, right? Hardcore. 
she is like kind of your no nonsense like Argus agent who's like I've seen shit. I've yeah. been through this like a million times. I've seen shit. I've done shit. Yeah. Sick of this shit. And um, Vigilante, who is Peacemaker's best friend. Well, actually, he's Peacemaker's friend. Peacemaker's best friend is Eagly. Yes. We'll get and, to we'll get to Eagly in a second. Yeah. Vigilante, who is Peace pretty Ma- much a sociopath. Uh, yeah. Peace, <laughs> he's like, Peacemaker calls him uh, his, uh, I don't remember the name he gives, but his friend's brother when he sees like him outside of the costume yeah and he it actually kind of makes me understand like the way vigilante is acting because he acts almost a lot like the tag along kid brother who just wants to hang out with the cool older kids like he never grew out of that yeah but he's also a psychotic killer who will kill you if you smoked weed when it was illegal yeah and he <laughs> does get shit done he is pretty effective at, yeah but uh, he's Murdering people. (laughs) By his own admission, he doesn't feel emotions the way normal people do. He definitely does not. Nope. He is uh, is a complete sociopath. There's so many things (laughs) wrong with that guy. And like, in some ways, like, you kind of think like, oh, maybe he's like getting better. And it's like, nope. (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't learn or grow at all. Yeah. I mean, at the beginning of the show, there's a scene where Peacemaker's kind of hesitating because his mission at the beginning of the show is to assassinate this political family who are... Well, he's told that he's just going to kill a senator, but then he's like, no, you have to kill the whole family, the kids too. He's like, what? And he's now like, I know I, I, I said I was like, I'd kill women and children, but now he's like all conflicted and stuff. And he's just, he can't bring himself to do it. Yeah. Then Vigilante, he's like, I'll do it. Yeah, he's just like, I have no problems. Like, and he's, he's just like humming while doing it, too. Oh, so fucked up. Yeah, he is a nutty character. I'll say. Um, Definitely completely different than how he usually is in the comics. In the comics, he's more of your just, he's just like a Punisher type character. Yeah, and I guess more or less he looks like the way he looks in the comics, which yeah, is pretty cool. Yeah, pretty accurate, I would yeah. say. Huh. I wonder if they'll make a toy of him. <laughs> Talk to Todd McFarlane. Yeah, seriously. Dear Todd McFarlane, first of all, why is Spawn? <laughs> why is Spawn? <laughs> Second of all, vigilante figure when? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, Tyler Hecklin, Superman. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> uh, what other character is there? I mean, that's pretty much it. Like, I'm Merv talking. is just... Mern. Like, he, Mern. He's... Their leader... Who, who turns is, out to be a butterfly. Yeah, he's a butterfly. But he's a butterfly who's, like, got a conscience because he's like, I don't want to, like, kill all these people that they're killing. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I don't know. We, we don't need the synopsis, like, all the way. It's pretty simple setup, but, like, what are some of the crazier moments you remember of this show? Because, honestly, this whole show is just, like one big crazy moment that I was kind of just, I can't believe they did that. I can't believe the show is like this. This is insane. I mean, the the aforementioned chainsaw into the gorilla was one. Yeah. I was like, holy fuck, this is crazy. Uh, I got a kick out of when they uh, infiltrated the, went to that factory where he has like the x-ray vision and he just immediately starts shooting people. Pio <laughs> freaks out. Yeah. And then there's that great moment where he's just got a grenade attached to like a tank shell and throws it. And like it explodes. I love the 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 back and forth after that where Adebayo's just like, why didn't you tell me to run? And he's like, I need to tell you to run from a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's like it's a bomb. Run. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, that was pretty good. Um yeah, it's, it's hard for me to remember everything because it's like, I really like the show, but I only watched every episode like once as they came out. And it was just really crazy and enjoyable. Like, I mean, a lot of the stuff with Eagly is a lot of fun. I mean, Eagly is adorable. He is... Very it's loyal. A, I love that he just keeps evil. bringing... He, he keeps bringing him dead animals. Yeah. Because he's a bird. Yeah. That's all they know how to do. It's like weird. He, he's a bird, but he acts like a cat. <laughs> it's like that's what cats do. They're like, here you go. Well, birds will also bring dead animals to their their young. Does yeah. Eagly think? 
I almost called him John Cena. Yeah. Does Higley think Peacemaker is his kid? <laughs> yeah. It, it is pretty interesting that, like, you know, sometimes with certain actors, you're like, you're like, oh, that guy is just being himself. I, I would argue, though, at least in this role, like, even though, yes, it's John Cena and he's, like, an enormous man, I kind of am like, okay, like, he's actually doing a really good job as, like, being this character. And he is completely playing against type. Yeah. He's, I, I don't know, it's like, I, I haven't seen too many movies with John Cena in it, and for what I've seen for this, I'm just like, you know, he's a lot better than I thought he would be. Um, I mean, I'm just still so used to the John Cena wrestling character who's just like this goody-goody Superman type character. Yeah. Who's all about being the best you can be and all, and I'll visit all the sick children in all the hospitals. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what can Ooh. you say? John Cena is a treasure. He plays the piano for real in a scene, and he you're does. just like, that was him? I can't believe it. Of course it was him. I, yeah, I know. Just like, God damn, John Cena. It's just like, I gotta work harder. <laughs> No one like, works you're harder. Like, you're, you're like peak like human potential in every way. That's why he was on top of WWE for so long. Yeah. <laughs> just like, no wonder why he's the best. <laughs> uh, there's one, I just reminded myself, because I mentioned visiting the sick kids, when he visits the, the kids at the school because of the, the janitor, he be, I guess he befriended him. Yeah. There's that great moment that gets overlooked, but I feel it could be great fodder for a future season. Where, like, the little girl is just like, I think he might be my real dad. And he's like, what? Oh, man, yeah. I mean, could you imagine Peacemaker trying to be a dad? That would be very bizarre. <laughs> I, I would love to see it. <laughs> I think one of my favorite moments in the show is just, like, Peacemaker and Vigilante hanging out in the woods, like, blowing shit up. Apparently that's something James Gunn did when he was younger. Huh. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like something kids in my neighborhood would have done to, well, actually they did do. Um, yeah, I was set a, set a small part of the creek on fire one time and it was a big thing. And not, not enough <laughs> woods near my neighborhood to pull off shenanigans like that. Yeah, but it's just like funny. It's like, they're just like big kids. <laughs> like I said, Vigilante, he's still in that tag along kid brother mode. Yeah. <laughs> Like, all the weird, like, hair metal stuff uh, Peacemaker's into is pretty fun. I think some of that might just be James Gunn. Yeah, and then the economist <laughs> is also into it as That's well. how they bond. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I mean, uh, getting into, like, I guess closer to the end of the show where the butterflies, you know, they take people's bodies over, but they can't eat any of the food on Earth, so they have to rely on their cow which is a giant caterpillar creature that they're holding underneath a barn yeah. in a farm. And it is so goofy looking. <laughs> it's like this giant worm with like one big spiky tooth. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's, it's kind of like, oh, it's like Starro again, but not really. Because it's just like a giant monster at the end, but... They don't, it's not like they fight it. No, they don't fight it. Because it, it, it's basically defenseless and kind of harmless. Yeah. Yeah, it, it makes like the goop that they uh, eat. And... I did like that Economo saw it. It's like, nope, nope, not another fucking kaiju. <laughs> yeah. He's so like, I'm done. No, not again. <laughs> um, yeah. I do like that when it comes out that uh, they find out how to buy a the daughter of Waller, she calls her mom. She's like, hey, maybe, maybe call the Justice League. And I'm like, Justice League ain't showing up. Yeah. Then the Justice League showed up. It's <laughs> so amazing how Peacemaker is so dismissive of them. Well, I mean, you know what? He has every right to be mad because they, they were late. They were too late. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like this version of the Justice League kind of sucks anyway. So. Well, I mean, we all saw the movie. Yeah. And then they had to make the movie again. Yeah. We all saw that movie. Well, some people saw it. Yeah. I think and some people were just confused. Wait, didn't that movie already come out? It's pretty amazing that they literally have Peacemaker curse out the Justice League, pretty much say it's about time you fucking asshole showed up. And then, like, 
tells Aquaman to his face, like, get out of here, fish fucker. And then it's actually Jason Momoa. <laughs> he, like, like, I don't know how that rumor got started. And then it's the guy who plays Flash, Ezra Miller. And he's just like, well, it's because it's true. And then he literally says, fuck you, Barry. And then Barry snickers. And, I'm, and a lot of people I think I've noticed are speculating, did Barry start that rumor? Oh, my God. <laughs> but Barry is clearly egging him on because... He's just being a dick. Yeah, it's like, m- maybe that Flash will become a Flash that I actually like someday. But so far, I'm just he, like, meh. <laughs> have you noticed that he's done more cameos than he actually has done actual roles and stuff? Yeah, and I'll give that guy, like, credit. I mean, he's game to, like, show up on a CW show, so. He cameoed in Batman vs. Superman. Yeah. He cameoed in the original Suicide Squad. He did, didn't he? He cameoed in Crisis on Infinite Earths on the CW. Yeah. And he cameoed in this. Yeah. May as well call him Cameo Man. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. I just can't... I, I mean, it was just so weird. I mean, yeah, you got a silhouette, Wonder Woman and silhouette Superman that you're not going to see the faces of because Gal Gadot's busy and Superman... Yeah, we don't even know who's playing Superman now. I mean, there might not even be a Superman after the Flash breaks the universe or whatever he's going to do. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I guess. But... But if you want to see Superman, just watch Superman alone. It's a good show. Yeah. Um, just saying. Yeah, this show is so good. It's it's different. It's so <sighs> different than like a lot of the like shows Marvel's making at the moment. I mean, most of Marvel shows have been kind of the same. Yeah. Whether it was even before Marvel Studios got involved, all the Marvel Netflix shows, a lot of them were kind of samey. They were. In... It's like we're 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 in neighborhoods in New York City beating people up in alleyways. Or on streets. Was great at the time. It was great for Daredevil. It got it got stale for all those other characters. I think Daredevil and Jessica Jones were really good. And Jessica Jones season two. Yeah. And I never even watched three. Luke Cage was pretty good. Solid. And then Iron Fist was, let's face it, bad. I thought season two was better. Yeah. Different showrunner. That helps. Maybe one day we'll talk about those shows. Oh, wait. You can't watch them anymore. They're gone forever. Not yet. <laughs> oh. But soon. Yeah. But not for me. Right. I bought the Blu-rays of Daredevil. <laughs> physical media. This is why you should embrace physical media. Because you know what? They can't take that from me. Yeah. Yeah. Which means, you know, if they'll put Peacemaker out on Blu-ray. I'm buying it. I'd probably buy it, too. Just because I really liked it. I was... Just, I can't believe how much I liked it. This is something that like began with they're making a second Suicide Squad movie. I hate that for well, I don't hate the first Suicide Squad movie, but let's just say I don't really like it that much. I like didn't want to own it. I'm like, oh, I don't care about a sequel. James Gunn's directing the sequel. Okay, maybe I'll see what he does for the sequel. Oh, it was the best DC movie that came out last year. It was I mean, the only it one. It was the only one. But like, <laughs> let's face it, it was the best DC movie they've made in a while, at least for me. Sure. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, I'm I'm all in on Suicide Squad. I like bought the toys because I'm a man child, and I'm like, you can build a king shark. That's awesome. <laughs> and it's like they're making a peacemaker show, and I'm like, all right. And then I'm like, why do I like this? This was like the one DC thing I didn't give a shit about. And now I give a shit about the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. It's crazy. Well, you know what? Quality. But it's a good thing, yeah. Quality, you know, cream rises to the top and all that. You know, that, it's, it's how it is, you know. It doesn't matter if it's a character you gave a shit about. If it's good, it'll draw you in. I didn't give a fuck about the Guardians of the Galaxy in 2014. I'm sure you didn't either. I didn't even know who they were. Nobody did. <laughs> All we knew was like, hey, there's a raccoon guy in a tree. And I was just like, doesn't the raccoon have a Cockney accent? He had a Cockney accent in the one thing I saw him in. Yeah. But then didn't Not matter. Anymore. Nope. <laughs> I think he has that Cockney accent in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Yes. Which might have been the first time I saw that character. Might have been the second time I saw that character. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, they were in, the movie was good. And yeah. That's all that mattered. It doesn't matter what character you, you choose to adapt. Because I've seen somebody... There was like a lot of the asshole side of fans being like, who asked for this? Nobody asked for a Peacemaker show. It's like, nobody asked for anything. Nobody asked for Jaws. Nobody asked for Star Wars. Nobody asked... For, but you know what? They, we got those things and they were great. Yeah. 
And I guess when you're working in the obscure characters, you can literally do whatever you want. Pretty much. Because you... it almost seems like, you know, everybody says this, but like it really seems like it's the case where movie studios are not willing to make something that's not known. So the only way you can make something like actually new is if you take something super obscure and just like make it your own now. At least in terms of... Uh... Like big budget type of stuff i guess for sure i mean it helps that like all right we, the suicide squad people know what that is but i'm gonna take these weird characters that nobody gives a fuck about then nobody has there's no fans of peacemaker before last year he literally killed off like all the characters at suicide squad in the beginning that you might have even known like no he only killed off one person you would have heard of because nobody else knew any of those other characters either that's true but yeah i mean boomerang that was people, it people knew him and, people knew him that was it because he was know. in the other movie I, I, how do you pitch that where it's just like i'm gonna make a movie with blood sport rat catcher 2 king shark peacemaker Here, here's how you pitch that i mean harley he, no, no. quinn but oh yeah there's that yeah I'm sure that was like a, uh, a mandate, but I'm sure he, he, he was game for it. Yeah. Because I think he likes that character a lot. But here's your selling point from the director of Guardians of the Galaxy. There you go. That's your selling point. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of hoping in the Peacemaker show, Weasel was going to show up for some weird reason. That would have been too much. <laughs> I, I, I am surprised at the restraint that the only other character from the Suicide Squad to show up was Amanda Waller. Yeah. I was happy to see her. I didn't think she'd show up, but I was glad to see her. Very sparingly used. Only, only two scenes. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's only so much you could do with Waller. Yeah. Um, Though, they kind of uh, or a monkey wrench into Task Force X. Yeah, because her daughter revealed everything. Exposed everything. everything. But the thing is, it's like, oh no, does that destroy the Task Force X? And I'm just like thinking to myself, eh, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, it's so, just me. so it's just you're going to stop doing Task Force X? That's classified. Or, you know, they just be like, fuck it. Yeah, we're doing this. What? Yeah. What? They, they just can't use them as fall people anymore. They, but they, you know what? They're not going to stop. Yeah. Men of all wouldn't stop. No. Yeah, the, she'd find a way around it. The live action man, the Waller is she's ruthless. Pretty mean. I'll yeah. say she makes the the one from Justice League Unlimited just like seem like a sweetheart. Yeah, you know, like I think I said in our Suicide Squad original movie video, like how the one from Justice League Unlimited was kind of like more. I felt she seemed like she was like a lot more like smart and playing like the long game, more of like a tactician, where. The ones in the movie are just like, I'm just ruthless. Yep. Like, I don't have a plan. I'm not being smart. I'm just ruthless. But, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Fuck. Like, and maybe it was just because and... one of the cartoons, like, I know who Batman is. And I'm like, well, if she knows who Batman is, she must be pretty smart. <laughs> I mean, she knew who Batman was in that movie, too. She did, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. In a deleted scene for The Suicide Squad, she's apparently very petty. Because hmm. they... In the movie itself, there's no real reason why Rick Flagg is on the, the decoy team. But then in the deleted scenes, there's a scene where, uh, where they ask him, why the hell are you on the decoy team? He's like, well, I have an idea. And then it just like flashes back to him laughing at her dress. Oh, my God. <laughs> her shirt or whatever. And it's just like, whoa, holy shit. She is petty. Yeah. <laughs> she sent this man to his death because she had a stupid shirt on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, so crazy. Um, I guess we should talk about some of the like ending of Peacemaker and possibly where it's going for season two. because well, It doesn't... It, we had some character stuff that we could keep following up on. There's clearly something between Peacemaker and Harcourt. Yeah. Uh, I guess the whole thing with he's, Peacemaker and his father has the fight and Peacemaker actually ends up killing his father and yeah. now he sees him as like a which, hallucination which is from the comics yeah which i mean you have the guy robert patrick right yeah yeah you have him in there like why wouldn't you keep him around and having him as a hallucination i can only imagine some of the crazier stuff they're gonna do with him now <laughs> oh man and, and the fact that it seems like oh man he's just gonna keep killing him too yeah like maybe like snap neck while walking in the street just like ridiculous shit like that. Yeah. 
almost like uh, how Dexter saw his sister in the final, uh, the new season of Dexter, which ended kind of weirdly, honestly. <laughs> no, Dexter ended in a way that didn't satisfy its audience. I haven't seen that happen before. It, it was it was pretty good up until a certain point, but uh, I heard that about the original incarnation of Dexter. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day we'll talk about Dexter. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not watching a show for eight years of a show. That's true. That's a big commitment. Fuck that. Yeah. Uh, you watch nine years of a show, then we'll talk. Yeah. Good luck. I, good luck with it getting me to stick with a show that long, <laughs> even if I do like it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get you to finish. It took me like three months to get you to finish season two of Stargirl. And you had five minutes left in the season finale. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm like halfway through episode 10 of Titans. And I'm just like, I'm just like, eh, I don't know how I feel about this show. It always starts off strong and then kind of loses me. Well, if you actually finished episodes, that would probably help. Hey, maybe things just have to be really good. <laughs> I'm just saying, when it's good, it keeps my attention. When it's bad, I'm a fickle TV watcher. I will drop stuff like a hot rock pretty fast. I have complicated relationships with shows. <laughs> yeah. If it's like a show that I was on board for a very long time, it's very hard for me to drop it. Hmm. I'm in a very abusive relationship right now with Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I dropped that like, man, almost two years ago now. And, uh... At least the Flash season so far has been good. There's only been the five episodes, but... I've heard. Last season, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you want to find out, we have a video about that. Yeah, it's partially about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Peacemaker's getting a season two. Yep, and uh, James Gunn might be working on other DC-related shows. There's, he's got something else in, in the works. Probably about a different character from the Suicide Squad. Hmm. And he said something about it being in a different genre than Peacemaker and it would be less of a comedy. Okay. So I'm wondering who the hell it would be. Because that, that rules out Harley Quinn. Yeah. Do you think it would be Bloodsport? Possibly. I, I think it might be Ratcatcher, maybe. Maybe. You never know. Yeah. You, don't know, you never know with that guy. It's going to be King Shark. He's going to be like, I'm going to make you feel everything about the shark i mean i mean i have that scene in uh, suicide squad where he's looking at the people on the street and it's just like you could see the loneliness in his eyes yeah <laughs> there's a little there's a deleted scene with him where i guess the idea is to make you think he's going to eat some kids but then they find rat catcher finds him playing with them hmm. and he's like i made more friends <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know uh I guess a more dramatic character. I mean, Harley can be dramatic. It's Harley Quinn, though. I know. And, you know, the DC... I mean, DC has made me like that character now. Before, I was just like, she's just a henchwoman for a Joker. Like, what That's what it? she was, and then she grew beyond that. Yeah, and then, like, the cartoon was just like, oh. And then, like, the Birds of Prey movie, which has the dumb, ridiculous, too long of a title, happened, which I really like that movie, but... It's like, oh shit, Harley Quinn's like awesome now. What happened? This is the dark universe. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. It's weird. It is weird. It's like all these characters that like I didn't give a shit about when I was like younger. Now I'm just like, oh, I like these characters more now. Yeah, it's, it happens. Yeah. When you're a little kid, you don't care about the hot girl in the skin tight clown suit. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> and when you, you get older, they cast someone like Margot Robbie, and you're like, there's something about this character. I can't quite put my finger on it. Something about it. I just can't stop looking. <laughs> to be fair, I was never really into like the clownness of it. So no. like, the attractiveness of it. It's just like, yeah, but she's a clown. I don't like that. But like, I just like that she's uh, just like legitimately awesome and crazy now. <laughs> so... Yeah, like that cartoon, that cartoon is amazing. I'd and be... they actually, they have Harley Quinn say Batman fucks bats in live action. Yeah, they kind of cut it off before she actually said it, though. Yeah, 
but it was close. Yeah, not close enough. It's weird. DC's willing to let anybody say anything about any of their characters, but they are a little protective of Batman. He's the money maker. Yeah. I mean, she did say he fucked bats in a cartoon, so there's it's that. True. Yeah. I will say this. I wouldn't I'd be curious to see what happens if Peacemaker cross paths again with the other the Suicide Squad members. Yeah. What if he runs into Bloodsport again? He's like, you motherfucker, you're still alive? Bloody hell! <laughs> yeah, that's true, because... As far as they know, they he's dead. They know he's dead, yeah. I mean, and then again, they probably would have eventually saw the news. But man, they must have been laughing their asses off when Waller got exposed. Yeah. Like, Harley, Bloodsport, Ratcatcher 2. And they... I imagine King Shark would be laughing too. Yeah. He, wouldn't be, he wouldn't know why, but he'd want to be included, so he'd laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because it, it's weird, because at the end of Suicide Squad, they have the info to just be like, we can tell everybody, but instead we're going to blackmail you. It's just like, you're going to let us go, and we're going to do our thing, and then we're just going to, you know, not put your information out. But then her daughter is just like... Well, her daughter didn't expose Project Starfish. She it's just true. She doesn't have that information. Yeah, she they just do. exposed Project... Uh, Task Force X. Task Force X, yeah. Yeah, and the Project Butterfly thing. Yeah. And the fact that Peacemaker was framed. Yep. That was a crazy thing. I, I mean, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, eh, that's some shady shit right there. Damn it, Waller, why? Why are, you so, why are you so shady? Also, it's kind of weird that, like, Peacemaker was technically serving a life sentence, and he's out of jail, and it's just like, hey, um, shouldn't he have to, like, go back? To jail because well he did say that it's like you know technically they told me I was free to go and technically I'd have to go back to jail but there's nobody here to get me yeah well they I mean they fudged some paperwork probably that's true I mean he let's see uh, the court of Maltese mission that's ten years off his sentence uh, let's say butterfly mission that's another ten years what's ten years off a life sentence though because what's a life isn't a life sentence like twenty five years technically. I felt like sometimes they give like ridiculous sentences, like 150 years or something. I don't. They. I forget. They. They gave him like a 30, 40 year sentence or some shit like that. Okay. I forget, but, um. Well, you see, Chris. I don't know. Movies, comic books, whatever. Doesn't matter. There's an Aquaman. There is an Aquaman. <laughs> and I think he does fuck fish. I think Mira counts as a fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so nuts <laughs> all, all, one, all someone would have to have done is seen one of those like actual fish looking Atlantean people and then they find out his girlfriend's from Atlantis and they're just like oh my god he fucks fish yeah <laughs> not having seen Mira <laughs> yeah. well I guess Aquaman 2 is this year too so yep we'll be seeing Aquaman in the flash again pretty soon yeah not necessarily in the same scene. <laughs> Who the fuck knows at this point? Yeah, I mean... But I guarantee he won't be saying fuck in his movie. Definitely not. Definitely not. Watch, now it's going to fucking happen now that I said that. Man. He's going to be like, fuck you, Black Man! Man, it's going to be so weird. It's just like... It's just like, I thought DC movies were also for kids. No, not anymore. They're the adult superheroes. You kids go watch Marvel now. <laughs> <laughs> come back here when you grow up. Uh, come, come back when you're like... Let's, let's face it, 13. Like, <laughs> you, you, you'll know what's going on by then. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, what about Shazam? Fuck you. <laughs> Shazam curses now, too. <laughs> Shazam went to a strip club. Yeah. <laughs> you think that's for children? <laughs> Shazam had a life experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And with that, that's the Out of Touch podcast for this week. I Unless guess. you have anything else to add. Um... Give peace a chance. Give peace a chance. Good night, everybody.